Hey, you're in the garage with Vic Ferrari and the Minx. Doing this video so that you can tell how to maintenance the vehicle. So we're going to kind of go through it quick so it's not a long video, but we have a lot to cover. So let's get started. First off, brake fluid, dot three. Shop vac filters, only sold at Home Depot for the Home Depot shop vac five gallon conversion. You can see it right there. Those will go over your K&N filter to keep it super clean. You can just keep changing those out instead of plugging up your filter. K&N cleaning kit. There's the fluid that you spray on. It's like soap. You let the filter, uh, you spray it on, you rinse the filter out, you get it clean, you let it dry, you spray a light layer of oil, not heavy, just light, and put the filter back. Oil, heavy duty, diesel 1540, synthetic blend, sold at Walmart. Some days hard to find. I love that stuff. The closer you can get to straight 30 or even 1040 is good. Toolbox. This little tiny screwdriver is the only one for adjusting the carburetor. Do not use it for anything else because you'll screw it up and then you'll have a hard time. Got a uh, oil temperature uh, checker. You can just flip this on, stick it down in the oil dipstick hole and check your oil temperature. Your oil temperature can go clear to 250. At that point, I would shut the car off, let it cool. Your head temperatures can go anywhere. They average about 220 to 240. And that's here in Arizona on a summer day of 110. But they can out in the desert pushing the sand and really working it. You can run the heads up to 450 at that point. If it's getting close to 500, I would uh, pull over. Do not shut it off. Do not. Do not shut it off. Pull over. Leave it idling so that the engine fan can keep blowing air on those heads. And when you take the load off it, you stop going through the sand and you just sit there and idle for five minutes, then your heads will cool down. Okay, other than that, this thing's full of stuff and whatever. Keep the rag on top. It keeps all of this stuff from flying out when you're uh, driving. This toolbox. Oh, this is fun doing it one-handed. This toolbox. Goes in the rack right here. Okay, you got your air pump for the tires. You got little uh, fuel depth gauge for your fuel. This is where you put your fuel. You just pop this out, push it back in. Uh, you might smell gas from time to time. It's not leaking. It's just got a little hole right here. And that little hole is the breather. Uh, when you have a turn signal stop working, which happens quite a bit because these checker auto parts turn signals are cheap. You just replace this. If you have a fuse blow, each switch has its own fuse hooked right to it. They don't make fuse panels for these anymore, so I just put an inline fuse with each switch. So just check that if you have a certain item that's not working. Um, <clears throat> your <coughs> distributor. If you're going to tune this, you're going to want to go with the distributor, pop the cap, pop the rotor, pull the cover, and that points and condenser right there, you're going to want to set those points at 17. 16 should be loose, 17 should drag, 18 may be a no-go meaning it won't fit. That'll be pretty much perfect. If you're on the road and you get messed up, a matchbook cover will also be about 16 to 17. Once you have that set, then fire up the motor, adjust your carb just where it's at idle. Once it's running, you're going to want to come here and use 
this edge right here as your timing mark. This is really hard to do. This edge right there is your timing mark. You're going to want to bring it around to top dead center. It'll say TDD or T top dead center TDC on it. And uh, it's almost there, so let me crank it. <clears throat> okay. So, keeps getting in the way of the flashlight there. So you can see it's a. Uh, it's saying top dead center there. Basically right there is top dead center. This mark is nine. You can set it at nine at idle, but that's not a good way to do it. Because you're not idling very often when you're driving. Okay, so you're going to want to put your timing light on spark plug number one. And rotate. Uh, start the engine. Run it at 3,500 RPM, 3,500 RPM in neutral, and you're going to want it to read on the edge of this is going to be at 34. There's a mark at 28. That's too low. There's a mark at 32 and a mark at 36. You're going to want to be right between those two marks, and you'll be good to go. At that point, you're going to come up here. To the carburetor. Now you gotta listen. Everybody messes these carburetors up. Okay, let me put my headlamp back on. Sorry for laying you on the floor, but this is really hard to do with one hand. Okay, so right here you've got a screw. That is for the choke only. This choke right here rides on that screw. Okay? You can see it there. See how it rides those teeth? When it's at the bottom, because the engine's all the way hot, that, that screw should not touch at all. That is not the idle adjustment screw. Everybody thinks it is. It is not. The idle adjustment screw is this big fat one right here. Okay, that is what you want to adjust your idle to get it up to uh, 900 or 1,000 RPM at idle. Sounds like it's high, but it's not. That's where you want it, 1,000 or 900. Once you have it there and your timing is set and your points are set, then you adjust this little screw, which is your fuel air mixture, you bring it in until the engine starts to slow down and run rough. You bring it back out about a half a turn or so till the engine smooths out and speeds up, and that's where you want it. These yellow caps, do not replace them with hose and a screw stuck in the end of the hose because the threads will still leak air and you'll run like crap and you'll never know why. Replace those caps once a year because they're cheap China garbage and they'll dry out and crack and you'll wonder why you're running like shit. Okay, up here you've got your uh, oil breather. That, rain, that drains down. Let me, God, this is really a pain in the A. So the oil breather will drain down. This is almost impossible. I'm going to put it on the phone. Okay, the oil breather comes off here, goes up into the oil breather, and the top of the cap will unscrew with 210 millimeters and come off so you can clean it if need be, but it'll breathe through this hose and it'll return to each valve cover through those hoses. That takes all the pressure off your engine. Okay, your oil dipstick, this is important, you're going to want to listen. There's two lines. You want it on the full, which is the second line. I always go just a hair above it, maybe like an eighth inch. It will read an inch above it if you let the engine sit. And the reason is the oil cooler up here will drain back into the engine. So what you want to do is start the engine, let it run for about one minute, 
shut it off, and then check the oil immediately after shutting it off, and it should be on the full line. Okay, check it within 30 seconds. If you don't, you're going to get a fake reading uh, that you're over full. Okay, you want to make sure that that oil filter or cooler is full and you got oil in the, in the uh, oil pan. So check, run the engine, shut it off, walk back, check the oil. Don't do it any later than that or, or you're just going to have to start the motor again. When you put on these filter covers, just very lightly put this on with a zip tie. Don't crush your K&N. They're very soft, so just gently zip tie it. Uh, other than that, you can adjust your, uh, your mode button and then go up and down. When you hit the mode button, you'll see the needle come up to something, and you can go up or down to set the shift light. Then you can hit light to change different colors of light. Okay, sorry, I'm really not filming very good here. So anyway, that's mode, up, down, and change light colors. All right, this uh, light right here is an oil pressure light. It will turn on when your oil pressure hits 15, okay, you may see it flicker from time to time. And that's when your engine's like at a real low RPM, that's fine, no problem. The oil gauge reads very slow because it has a long, small hose from the engine. But your oil light right here should go out instantly along with that light. That one's on the hood to flash you in the face because you can't always watch that one. This one's the alternator light. It will stay on until you rev the engine once. Once you're above 1200 RPM, it will engage the field and it will start charging. Um, you have turn signals left and right. You got headlight, you've got backup lights, you got horn, you got fuel on and off. Shut the fuel pump off if you're doing something and you don't want the engine to run, otherwise you're going to flood the motor. You've got uh, the fan and your KC lights. I would run the oil cooler fan all the time. The cooler your oil is, the better. However, there is an emergency switch hidden back in behind the motor, back here, and it will kick the fan on when the temperature hits 180. So you'll never overheat, but it's best to keep your oil as cool as possible. Like I say, your heads, your head temperature can get to uh, 230, 240. That's pretty much the average temp they run at. Uh, even on a 116 degree day in Arizona, they run about uh, 240, 230. That is beyond good. Those heads can get in the sand dunes, they can push 450, even 500, at which point I would stop the car, but do not shut it off. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that. Stop the car, but do not shut it off. Let the fan that's hooked to the alternator, there's a fan in here, blows on both heads. Let it keep going at 1,000 RPM to cool those heads off. As soon as you do that, give it four or five minutes of idling, they'll be nice and cold again, or cool. Uh, your oil, like I said earlier, can reach uh, 250 degrees, and until then, it's okay. After that, I would start, I would turn the motor off, let it cool. Uh, other than that, you must run... Uh, in less an emergency situation, you must run high octane uh, fuel, like 91. Because it's an air-cooled motor, it can start pinging and knocking if you're not running high octane fuel. So you want to run good fuel. This right here is a fuel return line to the gas tank. It's like fuel-injected cars have today. 
And what it's for is back here, right here, you have the return. And so instead of the fuel sitting here and getting hot, waiting to go into the carburetor and starting to boil and vapor lock, it just returns the fuel to the tank. So you always have nice, cool fuel and you won't vapor lock in heavy traffic. So you can run this uh, thing uh, wide open or you can shut it. Doesn't matter either way, but I recommend leaving it wide open. Okay. If you're having any problems, maybe the car's not running on a super cold day, say it's 50 degrees out, maybe close it and let the fuel actually warm up. Um, other than that, that's about it. I hope that helps. I'll show you what these, uh, there's your whip antenna. And, uh, your tail light back here will get brighter when you hit the brake. And then you got your uh, headlights up here are your driving lights, not these. These will blind everybody and their mother and get, you'll get a ticket. Those are driving lights. And those are controlled by the bright and dimmer switch down on the floor behind the clutch. If you hit that, it will go up to the KC's. If you hit it again, it'll go back down. So I'll demonstrate that right now. There's your KC's, they're super bright. There's your driving lights. Okay, all right, thanks.